Hi, this is Adrian from Tactical Project Manager. Are you having trouble understanding how earned value analysis actually works? Then this video is for you because together we will perform an earned value analysis for a simple project and I will show you how the values are calculated and more importantly what's the meaning of the EVA metrics. And afterwards you will understand how the earned value method actually works and you can apply it in your own projects. And if you're taking an exam, you will be able to calculate the numbers yourself with confidence. Are you ready? Let's look at the example. Imagine the following project. We are going to build a machine for our client. And we're going to do this in only 14 days. Here is our project schedule. We have five main activities. We have planned three days for gathering the requirements. Then our engineers spend two days for creating the design. Afterwards, we're going to start building the machine, which is going to take four days. And in parallel, our experts can already start testing and refining the machine together with the client. And starting at day 12, we're going to roll out the machine, which is going to take three days. On this slide, you can see the numbers from our initial project plan and budget. We have the five activities, the expected effort, the estimated cost per day, and the planned budget for every task. So I have put all the values and information together on one screen so that you easily understand the relationship between the values. And now we are going to calculate the earned value analysis metrics. At the top, you see our project schedule. And remember the time scale is in days. Below the chart, we have the planned values for our project. So the five activities, the estimated effort in days, the cost per day, and the planned cost. And you also see the total budget. In the right table, we'll list our actual values that we have measured at the end of day eight. So I have spoken to my engineers and the team and I've asked them about the status of activities. And here are the numbers. So for activity number one, gathering requirements, we have so far incurred cost of $2,400 which is exactly as we have planned and the activity is 100% complete. For activity number two, create design, we have incurred cost of $1,500, which is, as you can see, more than we have planned. But the activity is also entirely complete. For activity number three, build product, we have incurred cost of $2,700, uh, which is still below the plan and we are 50% complete. Now, as you can see, activity number three, build machine, we should have completed already three quarters or 75% of the activity, but we have only completed 50% of the work so far. For activity number four, test and refine, uh, we have incurred cost of $700 and it's 25% complete. So there we are actually within schedule. We should have completed a quarter or 25% and that's what exactly what we have completed so far. Activity number five, rollout of the product. We haven't started that yet and we haven't incurred any cost for that activity and it's 0% complete. Now let's calculate the actual earned value metrics. And for this, we have the table below. The actual cost is simply how much money we have spent on the work so far. So for activity one, we have had cost of $2,400, which is exactly as planned. For activity two, we have spent $1,500, which as you may recognize is $300 more than the planned cost. For activity three, we have spent $2,700. And for activity four, we have spent $700. Activity five hasn't started yet and we haven't spent any money on it so far. And the total actual cost up to date is $7,300. Let's calculate the earned value. The earned value is also called budgeted cost of work performed, which tells us a little bit more. And here is what earned value stands for. It is the money we should have spent for the work that we have actually completed. We take the work that has been completed and are going to value it using our planned cost. So let's calculate the numbers. 
we get the earned value by simply multiplying the actual percentage of completion with the planned cost. For activity one, this means we have budgeted $2,400 and we multiply this by 100%. So this is 2,400. For activity two, we have completed 100% and we multiply it with our budgeted cost, 1,200. Activity three, we have budgeted $3,600 and we are going to multiply this by 50%. So that's $1,800. Activity four, the budget says it's $2,800 of estimated cost and we multiply it by 25%. So that's $700. And for activity five, which hasn't started yet, the planned cost was $1,500, but we haven't completed anything so far. So that's zero. So the total earned value for our project is 6,100. Next, let's calculate the planned value for this earned value analysis example. The planned value or PV is also called budgeted cost of work scheduled. And it, it represents the work that we should have accomplished until now, according to the project schedule and valued at the planned budget. Here is how you calculate the planned value. Let's take a look at the project schedule. For activity number one, we should have completed that already, so 100% completion, and we multiply 100% with the planned budget, which is 2,400. Activity number two, as you can see, this should already be completed because this activity finished after the fifth day and we are already at day eight. So we should have accomplished 100% of the work, which means two days and the planned cost for the two days is 1,200. Now for activity three, build machine, things are getting more interesting because according to the schedule, we should have already accomplished the work of three days, three out of four days, or 75%. And what's the value of these three days? Well, for activity three, each day is estimated to cost us $900. So 900 times three days is 2,700. For activity four, test and refine, we should have accomplished the work of one day, one out of four days and each day is worth $700. So let's multiply the one day with 700. What about activity number five, the rollout? Well, this is still ahead in the future and that's why the planned progress for this activity at our current point in time is 0%. We didn't have to start this activity yet. So it's 0% times 1,500, which is zero in planned value. And this gives us the total planned value for our project, which is 7,000. Now we calculate the CPI or cost performance index. The cost performance index gives us an idea how far above or under budget the project is in terms of the overall total approved budget. And we calculate the CPI simply by dividing the earned value by the actual cost. Now we could do this on a per task basis, but our goal is to get an overall idea for the entire project, whether we are doing fine or not so well in terms of spending. Let's calculate the cost performance index for our example. The earned value is 6,100 and we divide this by the actual cost of 7,300, which gives us a CPI of 0 0.84. Now, as you can see, this number is less than one, which means we are over budget. We are spending more money than we should be spending. We can now from this calculate the actual cost variance. How much more or less money are we actually spending? And the cost variance, is the difference between the earned value and the actual cost. In our case, this means earned value of 6,100 minus actual cost 7,300. This gives us a cost variance of minus 1,200. As a general rule, whenever the numbers are negative, this means it's not good, we are over budget. This means at the end of the project, we'll be $1,200 above budget. This implies we just continue the work 
like it has been performed and we don't save money on the remaining activities. The next metric in this example is the scheduled performance index, which tells us how far or behind the project is in relation to the planned project schedule. And the scheduled performance index is defined as the earned value divided by the planned value. For our example, we have to divide the earned value of 6100 by the planned value of 7000. And the SPI is 0 0.87, which again is less than 1, which means we are behind schedule. And finally, we can calculate the schedule variance, which is defined as the difference between the earned value and the planned value. And it gives us an idea of the magnitude of the delay or how much we are ahead of schedule. So in our case, we take the earned value of 6,100 and we subtract from that the planned value of 7,000. And the result is a schedule variance of minus 900. So as I told you before, negative values are bad. So minus 900 means we are behind schedule. And we can see this in our schedule. For activity three, build machine, we should have accomplished already that much, but we only completed that amount of work, 50%. And this is our schedule variance. The conclusion for this earned value analysis example is that we are over budget and behind schedule. If you found the video helpful, I'd love to hear from you in a comment. Also check out the resources that I have linked below the video. You will also find an article which explains earned value analysis in full detail. All the best, take care.